See, Jesus was the worship leader when he led his disciples here on earth. Jesus is truly passionate about his house being a place of prayer and worship. So when he entered the temple and saw the corruption of the money changers and loan sharks, he took over the outer courts. That's where the outsiders and the Gentiles were supposed to worship. So they, didn't, they took away that opportunity for Gentiles like us who were seeking God to worship. That's why he was so mad. They turned it into a place that was a marketplace, a sacred place to pray. And it was polluted by the smell of animals and bad business deals and greed and political corruption. So Jesus got angry, real angry. He got righteously angry. We don't like our God when he's angry, do we? I don't. And then the Lord drove them all out. And he was judging them that they were wrong in what they were doing. That it was supposed to be a place of worship. A place of house. A house of prayer and praise. And he was so intensely devoted to it that he was willing to die on the cross for it. Now this is where he was saying, destroy this temple and I'll raise it up in three days. And then the scripture talks about that to the leaders... They thought he was talking about the temple, but he meant the temple of his own body. And he was going to give it up. But then the temple was destroyed many years later. So we know that the Lord had done something incredible, changed the dynamic throughout the world in how we worship. And it's because he died on the cross and was raised from the dead that the Holy Spirit was able to help us to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. This is an amazing thing that happened. And so when we praise together, we are lifted up together. We are raised up. We are raised in our spirits and we become one. So it doesn't matter if it's a hymn or a contemporary song. We should all seek to sing together with energy and joy, no matter what the song is. Sing like you love the Lord. Act like you love the song that praises the Lord our God. And of course, there's different musical preferences. This has always been something that's gone on for many years. But this church is known for doing traditional worship. And that's what you love. So you sing very beautifully. This church is known for it. Other people have told me that. So it is an amazing thing that this is a wonderful house of worship. Because Jesus is a passionate about his church, and he wants to raise us up to give all glory to God. You see, when the risen Lord Jesus ascended into heaven, he became the eternal worship leader. Who leads, guides our praise and our love of God here on earth. So it rises with the Holy Spirit to heaven. And that's where we find in Hebrews 2 and Romans 15... The revelations that the Lord mediates our worship to God. Quote, I'll join the earthly and heavenly choir together. I'll lead all outsiders and insiders to rejoice together. People of all nations celebrate God. All colors and races give heavenly praise. End quote. So our Lord and Savior takes all of our beautiful melodies and even our off-key pitches and notes and purifies them before the Lord. The Lord takes our contemporary songs or our classic hymns and synergizes them so that they fully give glory to God. So all worship and praise and prayers rise up in Christ and are transformed and made perfect and holy. And God knows our hearts, the desires of our hearts, and that the Spirit makes all tunes glorify God. So may we sing to the Lord with all of our heart, mind, and soul. Give him all glory and praise every day. And continue to love the Lord. Amen.